Another career choice our students have after completing the ESL program is to go into the healthcare field. There are actually many options within this field, and we'll tell you everything you need to know to get started. We're talking with Sadette Brown, who is the director for PCC Healthcare Services. Good morning, Sadet. Good morning. Now, another great pathway for our students is, of course, the healthcare field. And what options would be available to them in this field? Okay. Um, here in Continuing Education, we offer a plethora of healthcare programs. Um, the first one that we have is the Nurse Aid One, which you may also hear as Nurse and Assistant One. Um, we offer that course, the Nurse Aid 2. That's after you take the Nurse Aid One course, you can further your skill set and become an NA2. Um, we have the EKG Monitor Tech Program, Pharmacy Tech Program, Phlebotomy Program, as well as CPR Training. Um, if you are a nurse aide and you actually let your certification expire, we have the Nurse Aid Refresher, the Medication Aid, and I believe that's about it. <laughs> that's a lot to choose from. Yes, it is. So, okay. many options. Well, are these uh, degree programs or certificate? You mentioned a certificate. Okay, yes, these are actually certificate programs. Um, these are programs that will get individuals into um, jobs that need certifications. Um, however, we do like for our students to continue on. We don't want them to stop here, so we show them different pathways to actually go after they leave here to get degrees. Now, what does an English language learner need to know in order to be successful in this program? Um, they need to have a little bit of a background in healthcare. Um, there's going to be a lot of medical terminology, not a whole bunch that they need to know, but if they can know a little bit about what a blood pressure is, um, how to take temperatures, knowing how to read a uh, thermometer. A lot of things are digital now, so we don't have to worry about having to read those glass thermometers, but there are going to be times that they're going to have to know how to do those things. Um, when it comes to math, you don't have to have a lot of math but if you could read a uh, clock and be able to take that clock and turn it into military time, that, would, that helps a lot. We see a lot of students struggle in that area. But um, other than that, I mean, just having the wherewithal to ask if they're having issues in the beginning, because we'll work with them um, if they need any extra vocabulary sheets or any extra one-on-one -on -one time, that's what we're here for. An ESL student would not necessarily have to go to the testing center in order to get into the program, is that right? Um, we do have some requirements for the program, and one of them is we want to know whether or not a student has at least a ninth grade reading and math level. Um, we see students that may not have that ninth grade math level still be successful, but they need that reading portion. So if they have a TAPE score, if they've done GED and at least reached a level of nine, I would actually let the per person into the program. Okay, great. And what kind of documentation would they need? Okay. For the program, when we're talking about Nurse Aid 1, because usually that's the entry um, level, they would need to have the TAPE test and score or the placement test score. If they've done any college math and English and have a grade C or better, they can bring me that transcript. Or if they already have a college degree, they can bring that. Um, we do need documentation that they've had chicken pox before, which is also known as varicella. Or the vaccine. Or the vaccine, okay. that is correct. So if they've had it before, a family member can just write a letter. Or if they have the vaccine, I'll just need their immunization record. Um, we do ask the students to provide a TB skin test. Um, that just lets us know whether or not they're positive or negative for TB. If by chance they're positive, we do have to ask for a chest x-ray. So they'll just bring that documentation in. Um, students have to be CPR certified, but they don't have to be certified before the class starts. We actually offer a class here every month, like one or two classes in CPR. So um, as long as they do it before clinical, they'll be fine. And then when they um, become CPR certified, they're good for two years. So that's also wonderful because they can go into a job already certified in CPR as well. Um, we need their ID. So that can be a driver's license, um, a state ID, something with a picture on it, mm -hmm. and as well as either a social security card um, in order for prereqs. Um, if the student does not have a social but has a tax ID number, they can actually take the course with that as well. We just need some doc kind of documentation. Okay, they can take the course with that, but when they go to get certified at the state test, Okay. What kind of documentation on that? At the state level, when they take the state test with the NACES, right now what they're asking for is a driver's license or state ID that is not expired. So it has to be in date, as well as a Social Security card. Now, things change 
pretty often. So students should just ask me what's going on right about now. What are they accepting right now? And then we can go from there. Have you had any of our ESL students in your program go through the program and be successful? We have. We've had tons of stu ESL students come through. Um, we love the partnership that we have with Ms. Fisher and she's uh, funneling students our way. So yes, we've had students become successful and we've had some that weren't successful and it was just because of the language barrier, but they were able to go back to ESL and let's up your skills there and we always welcome you back to try again. And there's something I want to reiterate. You mentioned uh, the vocabulary. Mm -hmm. So even if they didn't have the background of vocabulary in their home country, those who have already been in the healthcare field, mm -hmm. you say that you give them extra assistance with these vocabulary words and, and the definitions and things like that. We can sure you can. On that yes, um, any student that needs any extra help on a module, um, if they need extra time with our instructors, we provide one on one time with them if they need it, as well as vocabulary lists. There's a vocabulary list in every chapter. Um, there's pictures with those vocabulary lists too and definitions. So the student will already be equipped with that, but if they need something else, we've got tons of extra books that we can offer. And then our time, we've got tons of websites that help students. Um, you can put in a word and listen to it how it sounds and then they can keep practicing that way as well. So we've got a lot of resources that we can give an ESL student or any student. Is there, after they have taken the course and gotten certification by the state, um, any kind of job placement assistance for them? We don't technically have job placement but we do help our students to find jobs. Um, we have actually employers that come in the classroom and they do um, highlights of their their um, organization, um, what positions they have available and how to apply. So that's one thing that we offer. We also have HRD classes here. Um, those classes will help students um, with interview skills, resume building, resume writing. So we've got a lot of things to help students further their, um, their skill sets to be able to get that job. All right, Sadat Brown, thank you for being with us today. Thank you. And remember, healthcare is another great option for you to be successful here at PCC. For the Pitt Community College English as a Second Language program, I'm Gloria Maggio.